meet the Reveltech Yamaguchi VF1 toy. This toy comes with a display stand as seen here. The display stand connects to the back of the gun or a hole in the nose, depending on what you're going for. Obviously the hole in the nose works a little better for Gerwalk and Batroid since the gun will be in a hand. Uh, this toy is comprised primarily of Reveltech joints. Um, and that has its weaknesses and its strengths. Obviously, articulation of this toy gets pretty crazy. Um, but at the same time, you get giant balls appearing. You know, the, the non-transformable Rebel Tech has giant ball shoulders, which are a little awkward. This one has giant balls right below the hips. Uh, let's kind of keep the jokes on that one to a minimum. Uh, I'm going to quickly go through the modes here. Uh, one weakness you'll notice immediately on this toy is that the wings are going to fall right off. They're connected via a tiny little peg, and that's just something you're going to have to know, get used to, and they plug right back in, but it's one of the many things you'll find annoying. Uh, one other thing I'll note while in this mode still, this is a 1-100 scale toy. Uh, it's not advertised as a 1-100 scale anywhere on the box but I did the measurements and there it is. It's actually a truer to 1 100 scale than the Toy Nami toy is, which means it's a little smaller than the Toy Nami toy. You can actually see comparisons of this over on anymoon.com. But let's uh, go through the modes now. Generally speaking, I normally don't show the transformation sequence just because it takes too long and I don't think uh, I want to bore my audience with it. But uh, the Revel Tech comes with a little fishing hook. And the reason for this is in fighter mode, there's a little rod that sticks up from the fist area that connects to the backpack section. So you need to use this little fish hook to get that rod back out. Um, a lot easier to do when you don't have a camera in front of your face. But still, by no means an optimal way of doing things. Kind of silly. First time I tried it, it popped right out. But uh, so something to be on the lookout. You're gonna your toy is gonna come with little fishing hooks that could potentially get lost, so that you can do this when you go from Gerwalk back to fighter mode. This is gear walk mode. Now, uh, just a little helpful hint to, to anyone who's going to try transforming this toy. Always start by just popping the stupid wings off. They're just going to fall off anyways, so you might as well just start by removing them. Otherwise, they'll just frustrate you. Transformation of these toys pretty much sucks. Um, I'm not going to subject you to my transforming it, because that would be a cumbersome process at best. So here is the toy in gear walk mode. Um, you know, it holds the pose fine. You can uh, spin these knee joints to uh, get a more aggressive A stance and all that. Shoulders kind of dangle, um, but surprisingly, you know, they, they do what they need to do for this mode. Um, I'm having a little bit of a balancing issue right now, but it really isn't that bad to pose. Um, nothing too spectacular about it. it. It does what it needs to do in this mode. So if you have a sweet Gearwalk pose you really want to pull off, you could probably do it with the Revel Tech, which makes sense since articulation seems to be 99% of what this toy is about. All right, let's move on to Batroid. This is Batroid mode. Uh, the Revel Tech joints will let you get quite a bit of posability out of the toy. Um, like here you see with the elbow, you can go ahead and bring it up not quite as much as you can with like the Amato Gnu figure, but which I'm still probably mispronouncing. Um, the hips let you go way out, which is you know ridiculously more than you've probably seen any other VF1 toy do before. Um, and you do you can kind of hear the little clicking. So it does hold the joint position very well as you're trying to pose it. You've got the Gerwalk joint still there. You can twist at the knee, um, and obviously the knee bends and clicks. The feet, same deal. The feet even are little Revel Tech joints, which was not something I really expected. But I guess that's kind of how this operates. There you see the wings falling off. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and pull this other wing off before it does it on its own anyways. Um, 
yeah, you can kind of pull the hips out like that, and you can kind of rotate them that way. Um, you know, the shoulders just kind of on a spin joint. Um, head, you know, goes back and forth and left and right. Individual articulated antenna, lasers. Uh, the fist, you can move them up and down. Let's not have any inappropriate jokes yet. Um, there is no back joint, which when I saw how the chest fit, I assumed it was because there was some sort of joint in the back. But that is not the case. Um, they just went for that kind of hunched over look, which, you know, looks aggressive. I'll give them that. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much all there is to say. You could obviously, if the wings didn't fall out so easily, have, uh, have them splayed open. Uh, but that's pretty much about it. Uh, overall, it's a very cheap toy that is fun because it's poseable, but also frustrating because it kind of falls apart on you. Uh, not a stellar toy, but at this price range, I guess you're probably not expecting that. Uh, for comparisons to other toys that are similar and uh, you know, line art comparisons, that sort of thing, visit anymoon.com.